there has been a request that we should talk about the life and work of Imam Ali alayhi salam in English before I switch over to Urdu. The fact is that I would not like to continue for more than 45 minutes in all. So I'm going to be very brief in English. But it might be very necessary for all of us to concentrate on what I have to say tonight. On the occasion when we are assembled here to pay a tribute to a personality who has no equal in the history of Islam in particular and no equal in history of humanity in general except the personality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. Allah in Quran says verily there is no doubt that only those who have knowledge fear God. The ultimate of our existence on earth is to be able to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we talk of fearing him, we don't mean that he is there as a cruel king ready to punish us at every step. The meaning of fear in context with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to acknowledge that he is the only master and whatever we shall do on earth, we shall do in acquiescence to his will. Because he is the one who is bountiful, he is the one who blesses me and I have got to have that much of at least consideration that I do not do things which would displease him. If he has asked me to perform certain prayers, I'll do that in gratitude and thanks to him who created. But for that, the Prophet himself repeatedly told us, Talab al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim. To acquire, in fact to be in demand, to want, to desire having knowledge, to acquire knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. Biharul Anwar has got Another version also, Talab al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslima. But the word Muslim includes both, male and female. Utlubu al-ilm walau bisseen. Go in search of knowledge, even if it means going to China. That means the Prophet wanted Muslims to be learned, to have education, and not to be ignorant. And it is for this reason that the one of the most important hadith in which the Prophet has talked about Imam Ali is Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Aliyun Babu. I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its cat. This is perhaps the only hadith on which Shah Waliullah Dehlawi created so many doubts <coughs> saying that this hadith is not authentic. It is very easy to say this. But when it came to prove that it was not only authentic but it was a continuous hadith continuous in a sense that it has been reported continuously from the Prophet so much so that people should be certain about the Prophet having spoken this in not only the same meaning but the same words. And to prove that the author of Abaqatul Anwar Mir Hamidus and Marhum had to write two volumes to say 
that not only Shia but Sunnis have written this that the Prophet said this repeatedly Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Aliyun Babuha and he also said Ana Darul Hikmah wa Aliyun Babuha I am the house of wisdom and Ali is its door I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate why did he say that? The meaning of ilm has been changed by many to, to mean that it is only ilm adin, that the Prophet talked only about ilm adin. The question is to say that it is only ilm adin, that means only to know about religion, is not enough because that would mean that Islam preaches to know only Islam. That means fiqh. Well, actually the word ilm here does not mean that only. It means something more than simply one branch of science. And in order to understand this, there is only one question to settle. One problem must be answered first, and that is, in Islam, is knowledge a means to an end or an end in itself? Any knowledge. Is it a target itself? Or is it a means to a destination? If it is the means, if it is a mean to some destination, then we have to find what is that destination. And if it is the target itself, then so much of debate will be involved in it as to whether it is so or not. According to Islam, ilm is a mean, is a path, is a way which leads to something which is the ultimate goal. Ilm itself is not ultimate. Even masail e fiqh like wudu, ghusl, halal, haram, taharat, najasat, that is an ilm. But that is not the end. That is a mean which is supposed to take us to an end. Similarly, there are so many things. We have to find what is the end. The end is what Amir al Mu'mineen said. That when you have an ilm, then the end is to be cognizant, to know, to be nearer <coughs> to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma'rifatullah. Then he gives example. He says that when you have knowledge, when you have ilm, you see Allah before every step you take and after every step. He says this. He says, there isn't any event on earth, Imam says, there is no event on earth before which, after which, and together with which I did not see Allah. Awwaluhu wa ba'dahu wa ma'ah, with every event before it transpired, after it transpired, and while it transpired, I saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a doctor sits for an autopsy or for any investigation and opens up a body, human body or an animal body or anything, with that ilm and knowledge that he gets, the idea is that with the beating of heart that he observes, he must see Allah there. Or when he discovers for the first time how, this human ear functions, or the eyes see, for example, as we call it, or how the teeth are there set, or how the involuntary muscles work within me. When I see that for the first time, I must see Allah there. And that is the knowledge which takes me to Haq subhanahu wa ta'ala, any branch of knowledge that we met, even an astronomer looking at the sky, trying to see the stars and the constellations, finally has got to understand this. And even a businessman, even one who deals with economics, even one who deals with commerce, one who deals with laws, anyone, when you come to understand how human mind functions to keep a balance of justice in society, you, there you must see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you understand this, then when my young boy or young girl comes to madrasa and he is taught fiqh, he is taught how to pray, what not to eat, what to eat, 
how to make oneself pak that is not the ultimate the ultimate is to understand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore when ali ibn abi talib became the gate of knowledge it was not only for quran and hadith it was for the total refinement and enlightenment of human beings. And that is why I say that to understand Imam Ali alayhi salam, because I do hear so many people talk, I pity them because, not because I consider myself wiser than them, but I see that there is a diametrically opposed way of thinking. There are certain facts which they have not been able even to touch. They have not even reached the fringes. And they talk certain things for which we are all responsible. When they say, now, Imam Ali was an ordinary man like us. Ordinary man. Now, I don't understand what they mean by ordinary. In fact, none of us here, sincerely and genuinely, is prepared to consider himself ordinary. But only Ali ibn Abi Talib is ordinary. Every one of us here considers oneself extraordinary, special. But Imam Ali is ordinary. When none has taken pain to even read nothing else but Nahjul Balagha, where his sermons and his short sentences have been reported. Now, one Christian writer, Arab, Lebanese writes a book which is called Sautul Adala, the voice of justice. In fact, it is Adala al Saniya, voice of human justice. It runs into several volumes. There are three volumes among so many volumes in which he writes about Ali ibn Abi Talib. The whole thing is nothing but biography. But he compares Ali with Socrates, Ali with Plato, Ali with Aristotle. The writer is a Christian Arab. And he writes, he gives, he quotes all the wise sayings of all those great thinkers. And as opposed to that, he quotes Ali ibn Abi Talib from Nahjur Balagha and says, Ali does not talk of the past, nor of the present alone. What he says is for the future. A man who talked, it is in Nahjur Balagha, it has been translated, because there is no excuse now to say that, uh, Mullah Sahib, it is in Arabic, it is in English, it is translated in Gujarati, nowadays it is being translated in Kiswahili. Of course, yes, there is it. I believe that every language is a gift of God to humanity, right? Urdu, it is there, Persian is there, and I understand it has already been translated in Germany, so in French, so those who can, who want to read, may read. A man who we say is ordinary talks 14 centuries ago about timelessness, about void and spacelessness. A man who talks about existence before even time could be assumed, thought of, or even perceived. A man who talks about that absolute unity of God. That is the reason why the Egyptian scholars are not prepared to believe that Nahju Balagha belongs to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Their argument is that Ali seems to be far above his contemporaries. Our answer is that, that is the meaning of Imam. That is the meaning of Imam. If you are not above your contemporary, then you are not Imam. But if you are above, then you are Imam. That is why he said, Saluni qabla an tafqidun. This is in answer to what the Prophet has said. Ana Madina tul ilm wa aliyun babuha. Now he tells the people, ask me before you don't find me. Ask me before you do not find me among you. For I know the roads and ways of heaven more than the ways on earth. Just consider if he had been here today in Europe or in any part of America or Canada, saying, Oh, people, come and ask me before you don't find me. The man would not have time to breathe even. 
There are so many unsolved riddles and questions today. But no one came to ask Ali ibn Abi Talib. No one came to gain and benefit from his knowledge. And those who ask, ask certain silly questions like, how many hair does my boy have on his head? One man was sitting, of course, with his son and he said, Ya Ali, if you know everything, then how much? Can you count the hair on the head of my boy? It is, of course, the sincerity and honesty of Ali ibn Abi Talib that he did not answer that question. If I had been there, I would have answered. I would have told him, 250,066, count. I would have made him sit there for one year to count. But Ali ibn Abi Talib Islam did not want to play that game. What he told him was much more than that. The answer was, my brother, you are sitting here. You don't know that your wife at home now today has delivered a baby boy. Go and find out. When he came home, of course there was ex she was expecting, but not so soon. And nobody knew whether it was going to be a daughter or a son. And Ali from the member says, go home, Allah has given you a boy. And as he comes home, sees that, mashallah, the boy is born. He comes back and says, Ya Ali, you really know. He says, whatever I told you, we know. Saloni asked me. And there are many people who, after Ali ibn Abi Talib volunteered this, they risked. They even said Saluni, and they were asked certain questions which they never were able to answer. But I don't want to repeat them, but I would like to say one thing. That knowledge and ilm in all its branches, all secular and religious, is actually the heart, is actually the lifeline in a community. If a community is composed of and comprised of uneducated young men, as I see it, because it is my duty, as I see this gradual apathy creeping into the community where the moment a boy sees the color of the notes while he is still doing his vacations, works temporarily, is paid 100, 120, 30 pounds per week, and looks at the color of the queen and the money, he gradually starts thinking in terms of earning rather than learning. And I see the gradual apathy creeping into this community towards ilm and education, secular as well as religious. Hawza Ilmiya Sayyid al Khui has been established here. Many who do not know what is the meaning of Hausa and what is the meaning of Madrasa talk a lot about it. Those are sick minds and I have had enough of it. So I tend to for connive with it. For the sick minds whom I call Ahbaq, there is no medicine even with Isa ibn Maryam salam. So let it be as it were. But for those who know what it is, for the last four and a half years, this Hausa is running, and we have had only three Khoja Shias Nashri boys. Only three. The Molana is sitting here, and those who want to check the register, they can come and check the register. Three. The rest are all Sayyids or from Punjabi community, from Iraqi community, yes, but from Khoja only, three. That also over three, four and a half years. None is prepared to come to learn ilm adin. None. And ilm dunya when we were in Africa, we used to pester our parents to say, we want to go to London or wherever for for the studies. When we have come here, we find the boys and the girls now trying to avoid higher studies. 
when we shall become a community of ignorant people, a community which has a lower education level, it is going to be a community of very difficult people. And education, according to Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, is not for the sake of anything else but education. Knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It broadens your vision, deepens your sight. There is no guarantee in any branch of science that it will make you rich. Is there? How many I can see here? There is one in law. There is one in medicine. There is one in commerce. There is one in dean. Molana is there also. There may be... Uh, has anyone given you a written guarantee that when you qualify, inshallah, you'll become multi-billionaire? Has anyone? Whatever is destined, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. Some have gone through struggles after struggles. Huh? Oddities after oddities to, able, to be able to reach somewhere. But none can say that my education was meant for money and therefore now I am earning. Sometimes wisdom and money is inverse proportion. People who don't know even how to sign their names have got enough. And those who have learned enough have got nothing. So that is not the idea. Money is not, don't equate with money, you will be at loss. Education is for the sake of refinement and enlightenment. So that we have boys and girls who, in their dealings with each other, whether poor or rich, have that level which is called level of enlightenment, level of refinement, level of high social interaction, where we know each other, we respect each other, we talk like men and not like animals. That is the meaning of it. And there Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, has a proud occupation and status. What is the status? Wa Aliyun Babuha. That is the reason why he used to take each of his companions according to the level of his understanding, talk to him, explain him, and try to bring him up Raise him. What he told Kumail, he did not tell Mitham. What he told Mitham, he did not tell Kumail. And there were seatings and sessions with Salman Farsi where no one was allowed. Ali ibn Abi Talib would sit alone with him. And that is why Salman always said, once upon a time it so happened that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was coming towards the Prophet's house and Salman was coming out of the Prophet's house and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Salman, can you tell me who is sitting there with the Prophet? He said, there are three or four people, so and so, so and so, so and so, and there is one man, I don't know him. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud entered immediately and he found that all those whom Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Salman named were there. The only man he said he did not know was Ali ibn Abi Talib there. So when he met him next, he said, Abdullah, you told me there is one man you did not know. That man was Ali ibn Abi Talib. You don't know Ali? The answer was, Abdullah, to be very honest, I do not know Ali ibn Abi Talib. I don't understand him. The depth of knowledge. That individual, for whom? It is said that one, when he stood in mihrab, his tears rolled with the fear of God. But the same man, when he came out to fight, he swore there is no answer to his courage and no equal to his valor and bravery. The same man, when he came to deal with the poor, he sat with the poorest with all humility. He served the orphans and the widows. The same man, when he sat with the ministers and kings, he sat like them. When he sat as a judge, Set like a judge, Ali ibn Abi Talib, for which the Prophet, for whom the Prophet said, "Akwaqum Ali, the best judge among you is Ali ibn Abi Talib." How many qualities in one man? Soft, hard, brave, humble, and that is the reason why when Muawiyah asked Zarar after Imam Ali Salam's death, "Oh Zarar, can you describe Ali?" 
The answer he gave was, he said, I have seen with my own eyes at night when he stood to pray, I saw him shiver and tremble in presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like the one who has been. So to say, injured, hurt, or poisoned by a snake. But the same man, when we sat next to him, we would not be able to talk to him because of his presence. He was always full. He would tell us, why don't you speak? He would smile and say, why don't you speak? When he found us silent, he initiated and he told us to speak. That is the man Ali ibn Abi Talib. And it was at that time that Muawiyah wept and said, Wallahi kana kazalik. There is no doubt that Ali ibn Abi Talib was like that. And when he sat on Mimba, one man came to Muawiyah just to tell him, to please him. He came from Kufa. And Muawiyah asked, where are you coming from? He said, I'm coming from dumb person. That is Ali ibn Abi Talib. He wanted to please Muawiyah to say, that I am coming from a person who is dumb, who doesn't have the art of speech. And Muawiyah said, are you saying that Ali ibn Abi Talib is dumb? The foundation stone of eloquence in Arabic was laid by Ali ibn Abi Talib. Muawiyah says he is the fountainhead of eloquence. And you are trying to please me by speaking lies. The one who taught people how to talk in Arabic is Ali ibn Abi Talib. So when he sat on Mimba, when he was in Mihrab, when he was in the battlefield, when he sat as a judge, when he sat as a Mufassir, when he sat as an Alim, when in every respect Ali ibn Abi Talib has no equal. Only if we learned how to pay that attention to him, Imam Ali speaks even today. He left his book, he left his sayings. He left his dua. Kumail, we just now read. That is his dua, which he taught Kumail ibn Ziyad. Have we ever... Allah. Ilahi wa sayyidi wa maulai. Atusallitu nnar ala wujuhin kharrat li azamatika sajida. Oh Allah, are you going to set the flame of hell, fire, upon the faces which have bowed down in prostration before you? These faces have bowed down in sajda before you. Is the flame of fire going to touch these faces? وَعَلَىٰ أَلْسُنٍ نَطَقَتْ بِتَوْحِيدِكَ صَادِقَةً وَبِشُكْرِكَ مَادِحَةً Is that flame going to overwhelm or envelope or cover? These tongues which have spoken in glory about you and have sung your praises. وَعَلَىٰ قُلُوبِنِ اعْتَرَفَتْ بِإِلَاهِيَّتِكَ مُحَقِّقَ Are they going to burn these hearts which have acknowledged your superpower, your providence, you being my Rabb with all this certitude? وَعَلَىٰ ضَمَائِرَ Hawat min al ilm. Again, that word ilm. Wa ala zamaira. Hawat min al ilm bika hatta sarat khashia. And is that going to come upon this conscience? Is that hellfire going to come upon our conscience, which is encompassed by that knowledge about you, so much so that it has become subservient to you in fear? The purpose of knowledge is to make me subservient to Him. While we learn, we think God does not exist. With few degrees that we earn here and there, we try to question matters. It shows how naive the mind is. You see, when the glass cannot contain more water than what it should contain, then it spills. But we must learn how to contain so that we know the truth. With little degrees here and there, we ask questions as to where is God? While ilm was meant to give us insight into the existence and give us that inner voice telling us of certitude. May Allah give us that knowledge and wisdom to understand Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم